What's up, people? Welcome back. This is the Total OS Today channel, total technology for beginners and beyond. Thank you so much for all of your requests, many, many requests, including Fedora 22, which we will look at here in a moment. Oh, somebody mentioned Clear Linux as opposed to Foggy Linux. Bad joke, I know. Let's see, Chromanix. I wanted to take a look at Peppermint OS, the latest Cinnamon desktop from Linux Mint. And I'm trying to schedule some various uh, podcasts with different channel hosts. Many requests. I will do my best to honor as many requests as possible. But for tonight, Fedora 22. Now, if you are a beginner to the world of Linux, no matter which operating system you choose to download and try, make sure you read the documentation, especially if you are brand new. But for Fedora, it is Fedora, getfedora.org. Choose Workstation. And you can get some information here. I just clicked Download Now. I choose the default download link right here, Fedora 22. Now, one thing here, if you are new to this, and I already did this, I'll hit Cancel. Verify your download. Very, very important, no matter which Linux you use. Fedora, Ubuntu, Linux Mint, and the list goes on. Verify your MD5. Downloading the proper checksum, yeah, you need to check it. Click these instructions to get more information. If the file is, if your download is corrupted, you are wasting your time going to install it because something will probably break or not work correctly. Whatever operating system from Linux you download, verify the download first to make sure it is not corrupted. So thank you Fedora for pointing that out immediately especially for beginners. All right, so I am running this inside a virtual environment. Let's go ahead and get out of this and take a look at Fedora 22. All right, this is the default desktop here for Fedora 22. Now, this is the GNOME desktop environment. I'm not really sure if GNOME, the GNOME desktop, is the best type of Linux desktop for beginners. I think it looks slick. It does take some getting used to. It takes a little bit extra work to customize it the way you want it to be. It's not difficult, but this may not be the first choice for beginners. That being said, this runs pretty good. It runs pretty good, at least in a virtual environment. All right, right click and you'll get some options here. Go to settings. And you can, cons uh, can consider this, oh, the control panel, similar to the control panel in Windows self-explanatory here. Let's try sound. See what we have. Output, input, sound effects, applications, and your mute on off and volume control. Again, pretty much self-explanatory. Let's go ahead and click the X. You have some icons here. All right, the volume. I am connected wired, not wirelessly. All right, user toss today, that is me. And you have power, of course, some options here. And let's see what else we have. And this is probably settings. Yep, all settings. And you can search also. All right, your time and date with no notifications. Now, GNOME Desktop is really keyboard-centric. For example, I hit the Windows key or the Super key on the keyboard, and it'll get you to what you see here. You have a couple desktops to work with already. You would basically search for what you are looking for to get started, no matter with what piece of software that is installed. There are some shortcuts here to the left. Now, one thing about running in a virtual environment, it's usually not as smooth or as zippy as a full install, but this seems to be running okay. Let's get out of that. Uh, let's see, let's go back here, show applications, there we go. All right, this is everything that is installed. Uh, some pieces of software were not installed by default. For example, the Synaptic Package Manager is a powerful tool for installing and removing uh, software. This was not installed by default. Uh, personally, I think it should be, even if you are new to this and know nothing about this. Uh, now, the way I did it, 
Uh, let's go ahead and get out of this. I went to the um, terminal. Let's see, T, just go to ER, get started there. All right, terminal. And let's see, SU and password, super user. And let's see, uh, yum, Y-U-M, install, and then whatever package or piece of software you are, you are looking for. Now, I already installed Synaptic. Let's say I wanted to install a, install a screen recorder. Oh, hmm, let's try Volco screen. Try that. All right, let's see. Dependencies resolved. Uh, the download size, it needs 12 packages. Let's click Y and enter. And this should download Volco screen. Now, this may not be the first choice or the first uh, way to install software, especially if you are a beginner. I understand that it's it's not that difficult. Again, if you are new to this for the first time with any Linux, you may want to take a look at the documentation on how this works. All right, so click the X. So click the X, a little bit jumpy here in a virtual machine. All right, let's get out of that. So if I hit the super key and I want it to go to my screen recorder, V OK. And there you go, Voco screen. And that's how that works. All right, let's take a quick look and see what else is installed. Uh, let's see. Let's go to the uh, software center here. All right, all install updates. But let's go ahead and scroll down here. Editors picks, recommended graphics applications, some categories here, which is very user friendly. Let's go, what is immediately available? Let's try internet. All right, feature, chat, email. Oh, let's try web browser. And this will give you some options here. Uh, let's see, Midori is very fast. Cupzilla, I'm assuming it's based off of Firefox. I think it is. I haven't tried that yet. Otter browser, interesting. I'm surprised that Chrome is not here already. This is one of those situations where I would have to probably enable some uh, sub, I almost said suppositories, enable repositories uh, to get some other software installed. But other than that, this is pretty much um, self-explanatory. Email, GNOME Gmail. All right, let's go ahead and get out of that. Let's try, let's see, if I type in help, what happens? Is anything, there we go. All right, it's giving me some weather forecasts. Hmm, okay. Let's just do that. Let's see what it looks like. All right, GNOME help, getting started with GNOME, new to GNOME. Again, if you are new to this, I strongly recommend you take a look at this. In fact, you better, because if you don't, you will probably be lost and you might give up and that wouldn't be very fair, would it? Anyway, take a look at the help shortcut. Well, that is my quick look at Fedora 22. This, these are the files here. Again, self-explanatory desktop documents, downloads, the file tree to the left you are coming from a Windows environment. Now again, I, I have nothing installed here, so obviously nothing is going to pop up. You have some options here. If I double click that, by the way, it will um, yeah, maximize and minimize. Click the X to get out of that. So that is my look at Fedora. Uh, standard GNOME 3, GNOME Shell desktop environment. This is probably something that you love it or hate it or hate it. I, uh, I mess with this occasionally in a, um, a virtual machine. Um, I think it looks slick. It's not my first choice. I've been used to the Ubuntu, Ubuntu-based uh, distributions such as Ubuntu, uh, Mate, Linux Mint, and stuff like that. But that being said, uh, if you just wanted to download and test this, it's running fairly decent inside a virtual machine, so you don't have to you know, install this and erase your Windows operating system if you don't want to. But check it out, this may or may not be something that you like. Again, check out the documentation. 
Fedora 22, so far it looks pretty good and runs pretty good, at least inside a virtual environment. All right, there is one important thing I forgot to mention. If you are new to Fedora 22 and GNOME, make sure you check out extensions.gnome.org. These are basically add-ons that will make your operating system much, much more user-friendly. So definitely check this out. Now it says here we cannot detect a running copy of GNOME because I'm running Ubuntu Mate and not GNOME. So this is correct. That being said, definitely check out extensions.gnome.org incredibly user-friendly to check out something like this and pick out the pieces of software that will make your operating system a little bit more enjoyable. All right, well, that's it for this, for my quick look at Fedora 22. Thank you for the request. Uh, I forgot who asked me. I'm so sorry. Let me know and I'll give you a shout out next time if I remember. Thank you for the request. Thank you for watching and listening. If you haven't already, hey, go ahead and subscribe for future updates from Total OS Today. Subscribe, share, and support. It is greatly appreciated. As always, I will catch all of you sometime in the future.